was good. Boom, ba dum boom. Was good. Guy, what <laughs> is good? Before we even, <laughs> <laughs> how do we how do we start this? Guy, before we even kick off this thing, let's even let's kick it prof proper. Shout wow, we got we got the hits dropping. Shout out to our Ibo our Ibo homies. So now this is the December anthem, right? Dece- dirty December anthem. Dirty December. Hmm. If you're not. So I don't know how I don't know I don't know how to do any of the Ibo dances. I got you. I got you. It's a lot of shoulders. You gotta have Megan like knees because you gotta bend <laughs> and then you gotta have sturdy and then just pop the the shoulder. Nah, shout out to all Ibo. Shout out to all the old Ibo homies. Okay. Shout out to, can I say this? Ibo people be going back to the village. I rocks with them for that. Because so you know, right. people, they enter Lagos, they do dirty December and catch flights. Is it true? Ibo people go and see grandma, go and check on the house, you know. It's true. We so have, I, we have I, to I shout, big up them. Big we have them to shout out Tony one week. For the Onwa December joint that we just played. The de- uh, Dirty December. Dirty anthem. December anthem. 21 week, you know, Igbo champion, mm. you know. Egusi e- e- Gusi peoples. Mm, off in Salah. Off in Salah peoples. Mm. Well done. So you got head. <laughs> oh, wow. I you know, you have to know. You know, it got head too. Mm. Amy. Wow. You have not chopped life. Wow. Uri mm. Ure. You have not chopped life. Uri Ewu. No. A man that doesn't chop life you are the is being chopped by life. You, you are the ECU vibes. I see yeah. you over there. Oh, yeah, right. Shout out to, wow. You I don't know what, know what you means. said, but it looks like a gotish yeah. very thing to say. Very. You know when you don't understand what somebody's saying. But you, language, the but energy. You can, you can feel the energy. You, you, and, that. you just did that. You're an onyeshi. That's good. Back to sender. Is the energy positive back when I said to, that? Money back to sender. I, I try to just get that through. Back to sender. Anyways, what's good? How was your week? You know what? My week was actually very good. I'm gonna start this mad, very civil. I yeah. It was good. Did it was you good, um you know? do anything? See anything? What? Do anything? Why would I see anything? I don't like a movie or show. Uh I saw some Queen tweets. And, that's actually good that you brought that up. I saw Queen and Slim. Did ah. you see Queen and Slim? It's Queen and what? Queen and Slim. Okay. <laughs> what did you think I said? You said swim. Wow. What? I didn't say that. Like swimming with the fishes. I thought you were going to make an Irishman reference. What? Oh, I saw the Irishman as well. You saw the Irishman? Uh, Okay, so what do you want to talk about first? Irishman or Queen Slim? (sighs) Actually, hold on. Let's start with Irishman. We're we're being rude. Mm. We didn't even say what's up to our our, our listeners, our fans. Oh, we we said what up. We didn't give a special shout out to all the people that eat, um, you know. Oh, I thought we we're gonna. <laughs> okay, we're yes. gonna ease into we'll, this. We'll, we'll wait. We're Anyways. gonna ease into this topic. Uh, episode Cardi forty eight. Is this episode forty eight? Those girls wanted to party with Cardi guy. That one's all over her body. Yikes! 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 Wow. Yikes! Yikes! We'll, we'll, we'll get to that. Shout out to everyone that has been uh, ham- hammering us to drop episode. That's days. disgusting. That way, that way they were. Nobody's hammering me. Were, were ha- I am not being hammered. The collective group. Not to, no, no, they were hammering you. you cool. Are dis- you are disgusting. I don't want to know. Just know you are disgusting. Jesus okay. is Lord. Um, yes. Yeah, so um, I, we'll start with Irishman because we're not going to spend too much time on Irishman. It's a book about, um, I guess, Jimmy Hoffa being the biggest character like fame wise to the mob. yeah okay. well JFK is in it but it's really like speaking roles like that we would say Jimmy Hoffa okay so I really thought the Irishman was interesting because I remember okay this is gonna sound like a flex but it's not a flex I met Martin Scorsese oh nice two years ago okay um, and he was talking about this film uh, at the moment being optioned at different places and I know he mentioned that he was talking to a bunch of different uh, distribution, mm. whatever, but Netflix was also under consideration. So I'm happy that they decided to go with Netflix. Why is that? I think it had to do with uh, freedom, creative freedom. Gotcha, and, gotcha. And they offered a wild bag. No, that's why I, when I heard that he Scorsese was working with Netflix, I'm like, yeah. is it a series yeah. where he's like, you know what I mean? Like some 
pet project type thing, but this is big. Yeah, like all remember, the actors, like feels like a last hurrah type thing. So the the reason why we even linked, remember at that time I was trying to do the whole screenplay thing. So okay. I, I happened upon a fan, uh, um, an event. Uh, it was actually, it was like, um, it was a divinely set up meeting, Shah, where mm-hmm. I, I was eavesdropping in a conversation with one of my colleagues at the agency I was working at and he mentioned that Arne Scorsese was coming in to speak at one of our um, internal corporate events. So I, I kind of finessed my way into that event and used my time at the end to have a conversation with him and that's where I learned that it, I wasn't called the Irishman that no, but I knew it was a mob movie and he said it was going to be very similar to the Godfather and mm. all these different, you know, movies that we grew up watching. It was well watching. done. It was a really, really <clears throat> well made movie. Um, certain scenes were weird, like um, De Niro kicking. Yeah. Looking like an 80 year old man, Absolutely. but he's supposed to be like in his what, 40s then. Mm. It was a little weird, but it was really, really good. It kept me engaged. It's, I had to watch it in bits though. Did you grow up with any People, I mean, you're, you you were in. The this sounds illegal already. Uh, well, I'm not going to say any incriminating stuff. Okay. In the Bronx, you know, there's a lot of Italians there. Oh, wow. So I'm saying, do you have any Sicilian? No affiliates. Um, I have more have Albanian friends life? than I do Italians. Um, you mean you're not to be to be honest with you, I'm more chill. Uh, like I get along more with like Eastern Europeans than Western Europeans. Or even Central European. So I'm Shout out to all the Bricka Brickers. I'm, yeah, I'm good with the Ukrainians, the Albanians, the, I don't know. And they the, uh, it's just, they're more chill. Yeah. They're a lot of them think, a lot of them uh, claim Africa too because of uh, refugee stuff. No, no, yeah. They have, it's just a different energy. Obviously, they're still, you know, it's a different background and different outlook in life. But I just, I got along with them more. There were more Albanians in my high school um, than Italians. There's the Italian neighborhood. Mm. But like Morris Park in the Bronx, but I'm not around there much. I would, know? yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. Because if you I'm watch a Bronx tale, if you watch ever. a Bronx tale, that's like the area too. They shot some of it. Shout out um, to, to everyone brave enough to go to the Bronx. Big up the Bronx Queen. You know who the Queen of the Bronx is now, right? Uh, Ka- not Queen and Slim, but the actual Queen. Cardi B. Cardi B. Shout out to Cardi B. We're gonna be shouting at Cardi B all through the entire episode. Just get it. So you even have to play the drums. When should we ever mention Cardi Fam. B? Cardi B. Cardi B. We even have to change our name. It's K A. Cardi Blackstar. K A D I B I. Yeah, can Cardi B. No R. No R. It was very hard for people back home to say Cardi. I mean, why would they? Cardi B. Cardi. Let's go and play Card. One Cardi B. Cardi B. Cardi B. Cardi B. Let's be here. Okay. Let's let's go there. Ah, I got you, B. Got the B. That's, um, that's how you buy people. Just be giving people your buy names. That don't make sense. What are you eating for dinner today? Uh, wow, I don't know how to answer the question. Got the B. DB? Whoa! Oh wow! I see what you did. <laughs> wow, okay, that's so I saw what you were taking so it. That's you are disgusting. Don't upset me. <laughs> be careful. I will take don't off. upset me. Be careful. I will take <laughs> off. Um, you know, because because you are the Migos, you think you want wow. to dress. Well, bring okay. it home, bring it home, bring, okay. it home. No, bring it home, bring it home. Sip your ginger and shut up there. Okay. Um, yeah, Irishman. I grew up around a lot of my affiliates. Would you like to say any names? I'm not going to incriminate myself <laughs> or anybody that I grew up with. But that, that, that stuff has always kind of fascinated me because when we talk about like Nigerian underworld stuff, like that stuff isn't unfamiliar to me because I grew up around a lot of Italians and Irish that were in similar uh, lifestyles. Energy? Yeah. So, although I was never connected to any of that stuff. 100%? None of my family was ever connected to that stuff. Just for the records. What? You get your phone tapped tomorrow. Tomorrow. I just want anybody listening to this that had nothing to do with this. Guy. That's okay. Shut up, okay. dude. You had mob please. friends, mob Get ties. Get out of here. Get out of here, man. Shit, I'm saying. That is the answer to that question. So you don't have mob ties? Do me a favor, please. Say no. Get Say I don't here. have mob ties. Get out of here, man. Shit, I'm saying. Anyways, uh, I thought it could have been much shorter. That is the only critique yeah. I have about the movie. Could have been much shorter. I like the fact that Jimmy Hoffa is, is a character that I've heard uh, throughout. Yeah. You know. As a kid, you heard about Jimmy Hoffa. You don't know exactly what he did, but you heard the name, um, and you just knew he vanished. You don't know if he died or he was, you know, assassinated or whatever. You just know he isn't in, he isn't out here anymore. Facts. So prior to this movie, I will I always thought that 
you know, he had some mob ties, something went crazy, and they basically, the feds were like, yo, we're about to come down on some tax evasion shit, some racketeering stuff, which they got a lot of mob people on back mm-hmm. at that time. Mm-hmm. And he's like dipped off to like Argentina and became like Hispanic or something. That's what I thought happened. Uh, just vanished and never seen again. Just like Whitey Bulger. Remember when Whitey Bulger like dipped off to Florida for 40 years and they thought he was dead? dead yeah. the, the Irish mob dude. And then he, he, they caught him in Florida like two years ago living his best life right. with his wife under an assumed name. That's what I honestly thought happened to Jimmy Hoffa. But, but Who the knows? Movie, no, the, the, the movie says otherwise. The but, movie you know. says that this Frank dude basically said, said you know, wrote a book but what about if how Frank, he's the one that carried out the but actual what if killing. Frank, what if Frank is cool with Hoffa? He could be. And he's just like, yo, I killed him. Don't look for him no more. Yeah, who shit. knows? But I'm sure by now he, he's dead anyway. Everybody in the mob thinks that Frank is a liar, even though Frank was definitely working <laughs> Like it's confirmed he was working for the mob back then. Either way, Sha, it was entertaining because, you know, to realize that the mob has so much control had um, the, to kill the, a president. The mob had enough control to get rid of a president they didn't like, and potentially to get rid of civil rights leaders they didn't like. Like mm-hmm. there's so many mm-hmm. things that you take from that movie where you realize, oh. It's a different world. It's a complete the the underworld really controls everything happening in this country. Even mm-hmm. today, I think like you know, even though we have social it's more media, po- it's more in po- uh, politics now. But yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's insane. Like, it, it was a good movie. Like I said, it was a good movie. It was just something I had to watch in bits. Just could have been was, shorter. Yeah, definitely. I'm, it I'm, was an hour. I'd have long to for think me. about it. I don't know if it's an hour. So I don't know. The Jimmy Hoffa part could have been shortened by like at least forty five minutes. Got you. I'd have to even the know. ending. Like after, after the dude is like seen yeah, out. Yeah, like, like the, the I'm happy ever after moments were just yeah, no weird. remorse, no nothing, just kind of there in the convalescent home chilling. We got it. You yeah, know? we got it. End the dry. But anyway, uh, Queen and Slim. <sighs> Your two cents on um, Queen and Slim outside um, of the long side. Shout out to pro- all the actors. proud of every yeah, proud of all the talent involved with the movie. Proud of the director. Uh, you know, Lena's great. Her vision is amazing, wonderful. I personally am just tired of watching black trauma on screen. Mm. Uh, so I'm not saying don't go watch it. I'm not saying go watch it. Uh, I saw it and I was hoping that it would uh, be. It would. I was hoping that it wouldn't make me feel like it was only highlighting black trauma, basically. So. Um, it was entertaining until I felt like it was draining in that way. And I, from the start, I was drained by the dialogue. Yeah. Like, I felt like, and I know somebody going to take this as a diss, but um, it's not a diss. But you know those really, really, like, I'm talking, like, dialogue-wise, not the whole shebang. Yeah. But dialogue-wise, in the beginning, it just felt like... um somewhere in between a really really good high school play <laughs> and a spike movie like That's exactly how i felt the weird space in between it right yeah. where it was like say it's supposed, w- supposed to be teaching you a yeah, lesson type supposed give to like a, a sentence moral. but but each line supposed to hit you hard you know like it's supposed to <laughs> boom like and oh by the way if you haven't seen it <laughs> sorry oh yeah you should skip cuz I don't know when. I think we might go into it. Nah, we're not gonna go into it too much. But um, <laughs> yeah, it was just the dialogue was just a little A B C A B A B. Say this, say that, say this, say this. You know, <laughs> and look for shock rallies. I was just like, wait, what's going on? Why are they just saying one lines back and forth? Why? Why was everything catchy? <laughs> um, are you a good lawyer? I'm excellent. Why do black people always want to be excellent? Why can't they just be? I was like, <laughs> oh my god, I feel like I'm in a bad brunch. And I'm just hearing two people that I don't know talk, and I'm upset, you know. And it was one of those movie theaters where you could have alcohol, so I was just drinking my wow, you water. Are drunk. It's kind of my t- water. You are doing what? I was drinking water. You are drinking water. Washing down the movie. Wool up, nigga. Wool up. I don't wool know why. Up, wool up, I don't wool know why I did this to myself. Up, it's okay. I hear me. <laughs> Facts. Now, nah, but um, I post it here. It's okay. Don't worry. There were holes. There were certain holes in there. Like the sheriff is he still in the car? Did he come out enough to get the license plate? Like did they burn? Heck, it was that. It was. It all was the, um, the, everything he's describing is alleged. By the way, yeah. if you haven't seen the movie, we're not spoiling um, it for you. And then it was hard to like place a time of when the movie was like what what 
like what when are the characters really because it felt old and new all at once yeah the cinematography was interesting and, and there really wasn't a way to tell whether it was a, it felt a period like post piece Civil or War, yeah. yeah and then but how, i'm not gonna say how they met but you remember how they said they met correct which is very recent yes and then the the cinematography just takes you back and it's slow As and they're in a time machine and then it was like is this supposed to be dave Chappelle? could they not get dave Chappelle and they <laughs> use this guy instead of dave Chappelle? because it was just so dave Chappelle. Mm. if that's a word um so keeping i don't it, know it's keeping it real goes wrong sometimes yeah <laughs> so anyway i enjoyed watching it but i was just like uh like it was it's one of those things you have to watch it's a uh, it's a conversation starter indeed you know and unfortunately i feel like there's a there's gonna be a new genre which is gonna be like black people and police brutality or black I lives matter say it's gonna be a new a uh, new genre i think that there's a there's always been talk of oh we should turn this into a screenplay we should turn this into a movie blah blah blah. there's a bunch of documentaries can you that, believe we're living in this time bro um what's the movie michael b jordan i keep forgetting the name of it the, the like one of the earliest movies that we know michael b jordan from okay okay uh food well. thank you so those are those type of movies where it's like you're invoking a food lot of you can't see that shit twice though no. oh my god no. food was so heavy no food was very heavy agreed uh crash is another one okay true uh, true crash was a little i, I could watch crash again but I think wait a few years after you watch it mm -hmm. once. Um, um, yeah, there's a few of them, but definitely a tra I, I call it trauma porn. No, I I totally get I totally get that, and um, I know we're gonna segue soon to other movies coming out, but um, yeah, I just want to see it's it's a little sorry weird. if everybody can hear me drinking this uh, bisap. Okay, it's definitely hitting. Zobo. Zobo teens. Um, yeah, it, I'm just it tired was, of seeing sad shit on screen. It was bro. no, yeah, I don't like. I want to see more it, black I don't superhero share movies. It. I want to see more Black Panthers. I want to see more Afrofuturism on screen. I want to yeah. see Daddy Okorafor. I want to see um, <coughs> what's I want to see Children in blood, of Blood and Bone on screen. Facts, 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 facts. Shit like that. No, um, yeah, I think black trauma is a big thing. Um, and the whole white savior being involved is also a thing. Um, that happened in this movie a little bit, yeah. which was weird, because um, it just felt forced. Um, we don't need to see uh, Scar yeah, Scarlett Johansson saving anyone. <sighs> good. What's that other movie that's supposed to come out in Nigeria about uh, Herbert Macaulay? I think it's called Herbert Macaulay. By really? Emo Umoran? I, think that's I don't. Oh, oh, he's the one. Yeah. Okay, I know that name. I know the person. But, um, Shout out to Emo. Yeah, big up for that project and that move. Yeah, but talking about black trauma, I did you see the um the Issa movie coming out? Oh yeah, because that's a non-black trauma movie. Absolutely, the photograph movie. It's uh it's uh Lakeith Stanfield and okay. Issa Rae. Yeah, yeah. In it. it's supposed to drop Valentine's Day. So the dope shit about that is like it just. I was watching the preview and I was just waiting for who dies. Who gets hit by a car? That, and none of that we didn't happened. Any of it. Sure. Yeah, so Shout it's, to them. it's dope. You know, congrats to Issa, congrats to Lakeith. Absolutely, we and need um, we need that energy. I'm just and gonna homie from um Get Out is on there. Oh though. yeah, Lil Rel. Yeah, Lil Rel is on there. He's getting his bag. Congrats to him as well. You know, from 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 Get Out to you know to the photograph movie. He has wow. a, he has a show too. Unless it is it not? Isn't that crazy? The picture gets you out of the Get Out trap and now he's a photograph wow think about it Dang. think about it wow. bring it home that's somebody the, that's deep wow pause <laughs> um what? talking about trauma what? 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 somebody went to africa and caught diarrhea did you hear that <laughs> <laughs> segways segways galore i have I, them for let days let me just tell you i'm, I'm um, i've not done by done i am very I like proud of not. you I'm very proud of you. Uh, I, I, don't bro. I don't remember exactly who you're talking about. Huh. Hey. Yay. Yay. Um, Yay. Hey. Who is, hey. Who, hey. Which artist hey. is this? BX Proud. BX Heavy. Bronx. Big Bronx brand. Come on, baby. Body. You can fuck with me if you wanted to. A post to just forgive us for the yeah. words. No, we need. Your girl want to party with Cardi? Party. Cut it. Hey. I don't wanna choose. Shout out to party. Cut a nigga party off, so don't get comfortable. Look. Hey, 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 hey. I make money moves. Hey. 
yells. The broad acts are love. That means I don't fuck with you. I'm a so boss. That's who she's, who she's talking to. You know who she's talking to when she says she, that. She made that song way too early. She was who? Let's find out and see. Cardi B. I was in my room trying to get some sleep. I'm not taking a... I'm there, I get paid a fee. I be in the not them bench so much, I know they tired of me. Honestly, so she's, yeah. ta- she's talking about the slave yeah. babes in Accra. She knew about it for years she before. Did. She did. Oh, premonition. Bitch working as hard as me. I don't bother with these. Nope, she don't. She doesn't bother with Yen- Wendy Shea. She doesn't bother with Haja. Who they, who they trying to be? Wow, what? you dropping names. She doesn't bother with I'm none of them. I'm not touching none of these. I'm like, babe, my pussy feel like a lake. He want to swim with his face. I'm like, okay. I let him get what he want. He buy me Issa Laurent. Whenever I hear that line, I think of Denzel Washington. <laughs> he by me. He's in there, huh? Yeah, they she did. She is talking directly to Becca. F your oh. order. Oh, wow. You're dropping Hadja names. for real. Uh, I'm not touching and the rest this of topic. Yeah, yeah, baby, too, bro. She went through. Who was the chick with the with the fake Fendi all over the... the it wasn't Instagram? fake. They did the research. It's on the site. Oh, wow. That Fendi. Should, that should, it did look like she it came said from she gets Bronx. paid to go to weddings. Let's keep it all the way Bronx. It looked like it came wow. from Wow, we're making it, it Bronx. It carry look, on. It looked like it came from. Pra- from carry on, Jolly. It's the year of kebab. We got to mm. make sure that we, you know, it went from the year of return to the year of kebab. So we got to make sure that we cover this right. The thing just changed. It was in my what? It was returned before, and out of nowhere, Jolly, it what became the, the year of kebab. <laughs> Like, can we let's go through the timeline? So, Cardi Wait, lands on, in Ninja. Us talking, us us talking about this. Let, honestly, we're just is just is just the tip of the iceberg. Is that say, say one more time? The tip of the iceberg. <laughs> Big up, Aqua. The tip of the iceberg. Big up, Aqua. The biggest thing right now in Ghana social media. Pick up herself. Now nah, let Auntie shine. So we're going to run through it. The tip of the what? Okay. The Ibex, bro. Ibex Saloon. Yo, I, there's so many people that I, that we know that are Ghanaian that have just, they've just sent us their white flags of surrender, bro. Um, all right. So for those who don't know, <laughs> Cardi had two gigs. Ninja, or oh, Nigeria, and then Ghana. Shout big up everyone big involved. Up both countries, the promoters, <laughs> the, the whatever, the team that <laughs> makes this happen, right? Oh, Cardi lands in Nigeria. Cardi records. Oh, this feels like DR, no lie. <laughs> I love it. I feel the energy, blah, 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 blah. Gets to the hotel. She shows love. Can I say, Cardi executed this trip to perfection. Absolutely. Nothing... Cardi did everything right in my eyes, you know, but I'm from the Bronx, so Cardi could do very little wrong in my eyes because big Bronx. But Cardi gets to Ninja, um, turns up, goes out, um, says she wants to see the hood, says she wants to see real people, da 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 da. Um, goes out, at, and for those who don't know, Nigerian parties end about 7 a.m. Mm. So she was in the strip club paying tuition. It's true. Like she wild out. She had girls doing things on camera that we were we were all like, My goodness, mm. what is going on here? People were hitting me up like, yo, is this how strip clubs in Nigeria? Are? Yo, we out. So they brought they brought the Silver Fox, of course. Silver Fox was packed first day. Um she was out there with our favorite classic man, Jidena. Jidena was letting go the Jidena. Mm-hmm. She then I was letting go of them singles or whatever it was. Cardi was going through them singles as well. You know, it was a fun night. Mm. Next day, um, I think was Cardi's show. Before that, she hit up uh, uh, like a kid's home for like adopted kids. Oh, and yeah, all yeah, they brought like pampers. They bought out a store, took uh, it out there. You know, beautiful. Lady sanitary products. Yeah, 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 beautiful. Shout out to Cardi for that again. <laughs> then she had her show. Her concert, and after the concert, Cardi said, "I'm about to go take a nap and come back out," because mm-hmm. she was just enjoying herself. Mm-hmm. Came out again, I think this one, Burner, Tiwa, Zlatan, uh, David O sent her a bottle. He couldn't make so it, sent, um, and and she said, "I'm gonna drink beer, but I appreciate the champagne." And then she got wasted. She got wasted off the champagne. Whatever it was, so she got to Ghana, and now 
if you know the history of Nigeria and Ghana, you know we like to talk smack to each other. It's true. So she got to Ghana. Ghana's airport is beautiful. Yeah. Better looking than Nigeria's Besides airport. That tourism budget. Yeah. Ghana has put in a lot of work in making Ghana look good. Yep. And it looks very good. Absolutely. I was I was watching the staffs like, oh, they about to blow this out the water. Nigeria's mm-hmm. going to look like. Wow, they about to do what? Blow this out the water. Okay. What? 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 Sorry. It's okay. So Ghana was looking good. Okay. Get to the, air, uh, the hotel. Mm-hmm. Bruh. Chale, <laughs> yeah, it was a beautiful place. In, in fact, it yes. looked like one of those ranch houses. It had everything <laughs> on one floor. <laughs> and goddamn, everybody was on. Like it had the room connected to a room, connected to a walk-in closet, connected to the bathroom. Ranch fountains on one floor. I was like, Chale, this is amazing. Said, well done, stuff. Wow. You don't know about it. Heck, you don't, heck, 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 you heck, don't, you heck, don't know. Heck, heck, you don't know what's going on. Heck. So, heck, heck, heck. Um, that happens, and then we don't hear for Cardi for a minute. Cardi's not posting because Cardi's either on a story or you know posting some shit. Cardi's not posting for a minute. I was like, okay, she was just partying last night, so she probably shut it down mm. to rest. And then social media went nuts. <laughs> <laughs> a whole bunch of people we've never seen before. But I'm not tapped into Ghanaian entertainment. I, 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 I don't know. I don't know why it's going on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's what the issue was. She got to Ghana. That's exactly That's what, what the issue was. <laughs> she got off the plane. We don't drop that at the perfect time. <laughs> so aunties pulled up to the hotel. Mm-hmm. You know? I want you to know this. Like, before the aunties put up to the hotel, Cardi posted one picture. <laughs> the picture she posted, she was in a kente mm-hmm. bathing suit. Cardi was looking like a full snack. Hold Shout it. out to offsets. A it's, snack. Is it so tough? I was like, She's bro, Ghana looking, looking like a snack. good on this lady. Cardi, you know what I mean? Cardi be ready to attack. <laughs> And then we're like, damn, Ghana already won this. This is looking too good. And then our uh, came through like, Ghana must from, go. From prayer God. hours in Nigeria must have been like planning this. Cardi B was in Nigeria. I don't know where you? all of Ghanaian IG celebs just started going off on Cardi. The, 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 I saw the meme said when Cardi B was in Nigeria, money drinks party. Everything full ground. Mm. Everywhere stew. Mm. Then Cardi B went to Ghana to slay in native regalia and eat jollof and kebab. <laughs> <laughs> Two minutes later, Cardi B cannot come out again. Jesus. Why? <laughs> It was quite unfortunate. And he had after that wife done the porch for a crowd. Ish. Ish. <laughs> Ajay. I saw, I saw, I saw that. <laughs> That's supposed to be Cardi reacting. Anyway, so back to it. Cardi after B, Cardi B finished porging and decided to go meet her fans. I saw the lab coat. I'm not even going to. I don't want to attack anybody specifically. I'm just going to tell this tale, and it looks like Tinder is going to be calling people out their names. I'm chilling. <laughs> I want you guys to know. Auntie Adjua. She came out with a go-go gadget. The go-go gadget. The go-go gadget fit. Go-go gadget kimono. Shh. Go-go gadget kebab. Go- I was about to say, <laughs> shape of a chicken kebab. Fam. Scotty ate the kebab and disappeared, B. <laughs> and then everybody was like, and then, <laughs> fam, you don't know. You don't you know, know why it's going on. <laughs> Do you know who said that to Cardi B? The Jalof. That's so funny. When you eat Ghana Jalof, this is what you hear. <laughs> you don't know. You don't know why it's going on. <laughs> Yeah, that's legendary. You have to get the iberg ready. Oh, the iberg. <laughs> Tip about the iberg. So Cardi went to the <laughs> toilet. One time, and she thought it was all over. <laughs> She's like, "Okay, she, she that's it. it." She thought it was all over, but and then it wasn't, they, it wasn't listen, over. listen, it the, wasn't over. It the Ghanaian angel of said, "I beg, it's the tip of the eye bag." <laughs> so, Cardi was diarrhea ridden for hours. Jesus. So the Ghanaian slay queens who came through in droves with their finest fits. Makeup, lipo, good lighting, heels, no Honda wear. There was no Cardi B either. 
Jesus. Jesus is love. <laughs> you hate to hear it. Hate to hear it indeed. It was insane. Man. Twitter went, Twitter was, the only reason kebab wasn't trending on Twitter was, I saw about five different ways people spelled kebab. It was one with a K-E-B-O-B, K-H-E-B-A-B, K-Bab, K-Bab, Chimchini, or whatever else it's called. So it was yeah, it was a big mess. Slate queens were pissed, bro. No, they were very upset. I thought it was celebs, but the Ghanaian people quickly corrected me and said they're not celebs. They're, not celebs. they're, 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 they're just people with yeah. a good amount of following yeah. that do stuff online. Yeah. And I guess I they were looking for content. Influencers. They were trying to, you know, post on the gram, but they and did Cardi B. It was clear they didn't know who Cardi B was because no. the way they reacted. Because if you know who Cardi B is, you know you don't shade Cardi B. No. She is not above nah. and going she's, she's on petty. a story and telling people about everything and she did but the one thing i'll say about cardi she did not go down to anybody's level she said my fault i'm doing my makeup if my fans are out there we're gonna be out there we're gonna turn up and then she did yep and she ran into an acrobat shout out to aqua <laughs> tip of the tip of the eye bag. bag it only it reminds me of when nikki said it's time to put the on your sideburn. Wow. It's, that's all I could think when wow. she said iberg. When she said iberg, that's what I thought of. You got to remember, she did the spin like Nikki did when she said, um, yeah, bitches don't even know how to spell. Remember that? When she was spinning and right in front of the airport? Mm -mm, I don't remember that. You have to, you have to do it. Car Listen, you don't know about it. Basically, did you see Cardi responding to all the joints that were trying to basically... Yeah, please, share that with okay, the good so people. Okay, so Cardi responded to Moesha, Becca, Effia, Odo, Hadja for real, and a bunch of other quote-unquote influencers in Ghana that um, a bunch of our Ghanaian friends have even reached out to us to say that these women are not really anything important. But... You know, they think they are, and uh, Cardi set the record straight about what happened. So, uh, yeah, here it is. Females that they supposedly are. Ooh, from here. To be and I didn't know that. But let me tell you something. When I was around the pool around 3 p.m., which was the time supposedly that the meet and greet was going on, I was in the pool, and the same girls that are talking you know shit about me to say she she online, so bad. talking about I'm this, I'm that, y'all saw me around the pool. And it was around the time of the meet and greet. So if y'all see me around the pool, right, and I'm chilling, instead of acting so stush, mm. why don't stush and staring at me like again. if I have a piece of fucking shit, shit on, on my, my motherfucking, motherfucking eye. eye. Why don't you go up to me like, hey, hey, what's up? Welcome to Ghana, this and that. Um, Welcome to Ghana, welcome to this. Do you know there's a meet and greet going on so I could be aware? You know what I'm saying? If I was aware, if I would have known, I would have been like, oh shit, well, I'm going over there. I yeah, females she, she, has that a, she has a point. Listen, where I'm from, do you know what they call these people? Do you? I'll tell you, they're called local champions. Local, wow, shout out to them. Local champions. There's always those who are big in their space, mm. you know, a couple, you know, oversized in their area, and then they just think, like, the reaction to not, Cardi B not greeting you or saying what up to you just shows who you are, you know, and Absolutely. they drop the ball. And I think what we have to realize now is Ghana as a country is ready for december but the people are not ready no and they have to like and that's the one between ghana and nigeria to me and i know we're about to call ha um no, we're gonna take a break before we call ha okay let's take, take that break. break but um no you're absolutely right and this is a, i saw this i saw this grace the timeline as well i saw um uh, people basically talking about how these back to uh, you know december nigeria December Ghana trips really benefit the diasporans more than it benefits the local people. Yeah, I saw that, but I still think um, there's certain businesses out there that'll win. Um, hopefully, it's not all you know diaspora owned businesses because I know a lot of people going back home to start businesses, mm. and it doesn't necessarily affect the economy in a way where the locals are winning. But hopefully, it does across a tight knit city for the most part. Even though I feel I've heard the president. And of Ghana has been doing a lot of things that has been benefiting people coming so back. President Nana. Shout out to President Nana. Yeah, yeah. He's, but he's been doing a lot to get people to come back to Ghana, but hasn't necessarily been doing much for the locals. So mm -hmm. we'll see. But like I said, I think the country is ready. The people are it. And I think that's between, the difference between Ghana and Nigeria. Nigeria, the people are ready, but the country isn't. 
You know, the country isn't budgeting a lot for tourism, for security, and just access to certain things that people would love to experience. You know, just creating some kind of flow for things in Nigeria. So we'll take this break. Indeed. Well, we'll take this break after we, we basically talk. We we have one more small clip to Go play for it. Go for that, it. That uh, explains how um, these slay queens in Accra feel Uh-oh. about missing Cardi B. Oh, Cardi B. Yeah, they're pained. I just want them to, you know. Again, this is all Sunday. <laughs> so you going to Ghana this year, right? Uh, Medasi. Okay. Now you switch up. You know. Now we're down. You know. <laughs> Nagi now. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what's going on. You don't know don't how about know. it. Mm-mm. I don't know what's going on. You think you think I'm going to just admit where I'm going to be going when I'm making my joking stuffs, guy? No, no, no. We can't hmm. do that. Hmm. You don't know what's going on. Hack, hack, <laughs> hack. You don't know. You don't know <laughs> no, why it's going on. That's. I want to meet man if I when Mr. I go eventually. 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 <laughs> um. That we definitely have to add that to the to the soundboard. Eventually, for, for the laughs. <laughs> Man, them laughs with his soul, bro. It's not like a studio laugh. Like it sounds made. It does, man. It's so funny. All right, um, a quick word from our sponsors. <laughs> Huck. We'll be we'll be back in a few. <laughs> Alright, we're back. Um alright, cool. Now we should uh we should hit up our resident troublemaker. This is, this is um, our, our favorite Ghanaian Nigerian. One of our homies that basically kicked off this whole Cardi B in Banters, uh, yeah. yeah. He kicked off all the jokes, honestly. Um <laughs> I saw uh Let's see. This is some of the banter that was going on. Somebody said Cardi B came all the way from USA to hand Nigerians a big victory over Ghana. We didn't ask for it. We didn't see it coming, but it's a big win and a clean sheet. Me and the family are now Cardi B fans. No, she took care of business. <laughs> took care of business for us. Imagine David O. Wizkid, Burner Boy, Tiwa Savage, and Alambide going to welcome Cardi B at meet and greet. Laugh myself. God I couldn't even imagine that. <laughs> Couldn't imagine whiskey at the hotel lobby saying Yaga. Go indeed. Or easy Zaga dots. Hmm. Zaga B. Nah, bitch, my stomach is fucked up. <laughs> bitch got some oh, motherfucking cool. diarrhea. I know what the fuck I ate. I know what I drank. I know my what stomach she messed up. I, I know thought what she drank. Fucking canceling people and shit. Yeah, I'm on that live. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> nah, because these Canadians, Ganians were coming at me. They said I was lying and shit. Trying to act. No, bitch, my stomach fucked up. <laughs> shit. I know I don't play that shit. Now, let me finish shaking this shit. Bitch, got some motherfucker. <laughs> With yeah. her blocks, with her doo doo shoe in God, her hand. Ghanaian food really gave Cardi B diarrhea and left her stuck in the toilet. Got Nigerian Jalof came through with a last minute goal at the end of the decade to secure a big W in the Jalof Wars. It's I so think. crazy because. It's not that deep, but it's also very deep between very. Nigeria and Ghana. It's all jokes and. It's just a hint of seriousness. And then the best part was the lights going out in Ghana when she performed. Dog. So the stage lights went off at the Cardi B show in Ghana. <laughs> this guy said, after consulting VAR, 80 goals added to the 100 <laughs> Nigeria scored. Bonus points as it stands. Nepa, 80. Nigerian Jalof, 50. Nigerian Sheesh. celebrities, 50. Nigeria, who tripled Captain Nepa. Oh, oh. Should get Chief C titles. They're basically saying that they sabotage the Ghanaian. I'm telling you, prayer warriors were were on their job. We're on their dean. Cardi B started purging after eating Ghanaian food. Ghana zero one Nigeria. Ghanaian celeb rolling on the floor like they were doing deliverance for her. Ghana zero Nigeria two. Electricity couldn't come on right before Cardi B's performance. That's a hat trick. Game is over. Dog, that is hilarious, bruv. All right, we got to call H.A. now to get his side of the story because, nah, this is actually hilarious. H.A. 
Yeah, HR was good. HR rates. <laughs> HR Nkuma. Yeah, you are a trouble. Man. Boys are brave. Bro, 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 bro. They they call me it's a Quincy. It's a Kuma. Quincy. It's a Kwame. Fam. <laughs> All the days of the week, fam. It's just you That's now. So far. You are quite right. strongest, right. though. It's your Anan. Oh. Oh, H okay. and nine. That's good. I like that one. I mm. like that one. I'm just trying to get my Ghanaian passport, man. <laughs> nah, they got they, 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 At this up. point, they have no choice. You have to be the seven hundred seven hundred fifty first thousand visa. <laughs> they have to make an extra. Right. I need. I need that. I need that. All right. So yeah. first, introduce yourself to options. introduce yourself to the pod. Welcome to the pod. By the way, you're on the No Hollow Pod with. Myself, Sunde, and Bao, you, you know, we know you're a friend of the show, but for those yeah, of definitely. the listeners that uh, may follow you and the brand but don't even realize it, let us let us know who you are. That, that's fine. First of all, I want to say thank you guys for having me on, on the podcast. You guys do an amazing job. Thank you, brother. Uh, I am uh, good. Uh, I am Eche. I am the founder of uh, Afropolitan Group. Uh, I am based in the San Francisco Bay Area region, California. Uh, I am a promoter of everything Afrobeats. I want to see black people win. I want to see Africans and black people in the diaspora connect and we serve as a bridge to help bridge those two cultures. So Lovely. That's what I'm about. And you've been killing it. I mean, we've been Thanks. we've been acquainted for some years now. Uh, definitely. You know, we, could, we definitely consider you a, a, a more family than a friend. <clears throat> Definitely. So Definitely. let's let's talk about the uh, the topic at hand. So basically, <laughs> you found out about Cardi B going to Nigeria, and then you made some comments that I understood because we, you know, mm. between Bawo, mm. you and myself, we've always yeah. talked about um, the importance of tourism and and how it's important that we you know and invest in and tourism. Yeah, 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 and and not just doing all these like quick short term you know, yeah, vi- viral yeah. things to get people to pay attention to what's going on in Nigeria, especially, and to yeah. build long-term, long-lasting investments that will bring people coming throughout the year. We've talked yeah. about this. And there's a few people that, you know, we're all affiliated with that we share this uh, this ideal. But given that this Cardi B was so such a short, um, a, sh- a, 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 a quickly planned thing that ended up becoming a viral event, Share with us mm-hmm. your side of, of why, of first what you said and, and what you feel like should have happened instead at the time, so you, at think, the time you said what you said. Yeah. So what I had said on Twitter was, uh, Cardi B is going to go to Ghana and they'll take her to Cape coast. And then, but when she comes to Lagos, we're taking her to a strip club. And I think the problem with like tweets sometimes is Twitter doesn't give you enough like characters to expand on your thoughts. Mm. And then you have to go make a threat, right? Mm -hmm, And then most people just see the first tweet, don't catch the rest of the thread, and then they run with it. Mm -hmm. And even in, like, let's say I was talking to you or, like, when you're talking to people in person, right, you're able to read body language, you're able to see if I'm being sarcastic, you're able to catch these different nuances, right? But on Twitter, that just goes out the window, and then people respond to what they feel like they've seen. Yeah. Versus what they what you're really trying to convey, right? Because it was never about the strip club. Or it was never about Cape Coast. There was no way I even knew that, like, whether the artist the, they would even take uh, Cardi to Cape Coast. Yeah, it was more of like intentional strategic tourism, right? Mm-hmm. Like Nigeria always Nigerians seem to have this thing where we're all about the flash, and then once the flash is done, there's no substance. And I'm like, bro, like, what what are we doing? Right, like yes, we know how to package. We've always been wonderful people who know how to package and do PR. But yeah. what is the substance and where's the foundation? And Absolutely. that was really what I was speaking to. Absolutely, you know, so. and and a lot of us agreed with that sentiment. And then you had the op, op, a lot of obtuse responses from people who, you know, yeah, click. gaslighting and all that. You know how that goes. Yeah, I I think obviously there are people passionate about the country, which is understandable. You know, everybody's not meant to think above. The you know the influence of yeah. misplaced your passion exactly so but it's be real like Cardi's Cardi recorded we saw how it looked at the airport we saw it look mm. at the hotel we saw the view from the hotel mm-hmm. you know now it's yeah. not 
it's not you can't compare it. No. It's just it's just what it is. Now yeah, and for the organizer, I understand and, and, it was their way of trying to kind of no, match match that, that one I'm not I don't agree with. Because that that one the organizers went the African way, like we just we gonna figure it out. You know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah, she's, yeah no, definitely. she's at the hotel. But when Cardi landed, you could hear her, she was talking about going shopping. Yeah. yeah she was like, Oh, yeah. there's a gallery <laughs> right here, we're about to go shopping. Go ahead, Adrian, definitely. And don't and, and don't and don't get me wrong, I'm not even saying that the organizers themselves have to take on these responsibilities. I'm just saying that, like, Ghana had a top-down strategy, right? Brilliant people, people like us sat in a room, right, and crafted a strategy and was like, okay, this is what we're trying to do. These are the objectives, right? Mm -hmm, What mm -hmm. are the goals? How are we supposed to attract these type of people to our country? And and what I think, which I think for a lot of people, they don't understand what I'm referring to. So if you you go uh, expansive-wise, right, there's something called foreign direct investment, right? Which is how you're able to attract foreign investments into your country that are able to create jobs, improve the local economy, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Like, these are, these are what countries do, right? Right. But Nigeria's FD has been going down for a while now, right? Because of, of the government that we have, mm-hmm. the, the dysfunction in the country, and it's, it's, it's whack. But one of the easiest ways for us to even activate FDI it's through our tourism. Yep. Nigerians are popping. We're the ones who are, who, can you imagine we have Afrobeat? We were one of the pioneers in, this, in that space, right? Yep. We have like, we, we have like, we dance, we have Nolly, we have all these like entertainment, like things that we do so well, right? Mm-hmm. That we don't activate and we don't, we don't channel in the proper way because we are all about any hownness, right? And to me, it was like, yo, we need to start thinking better and doing better because the funny thing is, so, you know, I remember I saw you in Ghana last year, right? but I've been going to Ghana like two years before that. Yeah. And the first time I went to Ghana, I'm an event, I'm an, in the entertainment business, right? I always know what vibes look like, what good energy looks like, right? And I've been doing Lagos for a while, right? And Lagos was cool. Like, I remember, I think back in 2015, the Migos came, right? And it was all the rage, right? I remember like my friends back in the US, like, oh my God, the Migos are in Lagos. Why? I didn't know Lagos was popping like that. I didn't yeah. know that like you guys would know the lyrics like that. And I'm like, yeah, Lagos is popping. But, right, after I'd done Lagos for two, three Decembers in a row, it hit me like, yo, fam, all we do out here is club and strip club. That's it. Like, <laughs> at Fox. some point, a Silver Fox or, or Quillock. Quillock. And I'm like, at some point, we need to we need to translate this into something more. That, like, you can't tell me that this country has doesn't have more to offer. Well, like, no, what the have, fuck? We have like, a cool hotel now. Uh-uh. Like, you feel me? And I'm like, yo, every concert, a cool hotel. So to me, it was like, it got to a point where, like, because I have a serious boredom issue, right? I was like, what else is there to do in Lagos, right? Where, where can you meet real people, talk to real people, connect with real people? And it's not always about how many bottles have we popped in this club, how many more bottles will we pop tomorrow? It's like, come on, like, I'm all about selling experiences, right? So Mr. Easy and my library were heading out to Ghana, and Easy's team were like, yo, let's go to Ghana, man. I'm telling you, Ghana's going to be popping. I took that leap of faith and went out with them. And when I tell you that, like, just maybe the first day or two, the breeze that blew my head, just count my whole life down. I'm like, wow, like, I didn't even know that it was possible to be in Africa and breeze will blow you and you don't feel like you have to pay money to experience the breeze. Because, you know, in Lagos, it's everything is, oh, God said to me, oh, God said to me. And I'm like, bro, the Ghanaians were chill. They were welcoming. They welcomed you. And it was just fun. And on adult radio fun, it's not manufactured. It's not, it's just organic. And I was like this, and back then I realized something. I was like, this is something you can sell. This is something you can promote. Because the thing is, the Ghanaians at that time didn't really know how to promote their whole thing. And I was just telling them like, I can't believe that you guys are sitting on this gold mine. And this is what you guys have been enjoying each December. And we didn't even know about it in Lagos. Right? Like most people are not coming to Ghana in December. And I'm like, this is what you guys have been enjoying. And wait, what? So when you obviously with social media and you start seeing people like not posting Instagram, Mr. Easy helped to do with that. Um, you, you guys know Abdul from Africella. They yeah, did their so thing too. Abdul. So it was like you, 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 you um, what do you call it? You, you project this, what your, what your personality as a country is to the world. And people would be like, you know what? I'm attracted to that energy. I'm attracted to that, that level of fun or I'm attracted to seeing what I can do or build with that. And that's why Ghana is the way it is today. And I'm saying, I'm Nigerian. I want to see Nigeria also win. And I'm like, yo, guys, we also have good ingredients that we can use to make this pot of stew. 
why don't we come together and do the same thing? But the problem is with a lot of Nigerians, is we, they all know that it's a problem. But it's almost like when you, you compare that, because the way I am, right, you know, me and you have this conversation, is you look at people who are doing the things that you want to do and they're doing it right. And you're like, okay, cool. How can I, um, um, what do you call, learn from them, right? Mm-hmm. I, there's no ego in it. There's no like, oh, how dare you say, no, no, this person is doing things the right way or this company or this country is doing things the right way. What did they do? How did they do it? How can we learn? Mm-hmm. That's how you move forward. But I with Nigerians, it's almost like as soon as you say compare, <laughs> they feel like you've compared them to Ghana or compared them to South Africa. It's like that's what the conversation it's should be. Like. Yeah. Now, yeah, it's a diss. And I'm like, I don't understand what that mindset is because I'm not dissing. Even through my tweets, it was not about dissing. It was just more of like, hey, guys, this is what this country did. This is what we can also do. And we can move forward from there. But if the conversation gets shut down from the minute you talk, it's like, come on. I think you're, I think you're, I think you're also forgetting that uh, for those of us that were kind of raised in the diaspora, our communication skills are a bit different. Our, mm-hmm. our perception mm-hmm. is a lot different. Our viewpoints are a lot different. I know that people back home kind of look down on that mindset they think that uh, you know we have like no. an ego or like it's we're th- a little conceited when it comes to that type of stuff but the way we're able to have these types of conversations and be a little bit more logical about long-term wins versus short-term mm-hmm. wins <clears throat> i think mm-hmm. those are the differences and you have to think about it in that part of the world they have to think short-term gains because they're trying to feed their people now you know we have a we have a little more cushion for the for the for the for the most part, a lot of us in this side of the world have a, a bit more security to be able to plan long term and to yeah. strategize for long term wins. I think. No, I anyway. I agree with that. I agree. I think we're in the why not mindset, and they're yeah. on the why mindset, Correct. right? Because they have to justify right every dollar or naira no, spent on that side. Not only that, I think a lot of times, right? Like H said, for people to one change, they would have to admit there's something wrong. And no, we, we're, we're all having a hard time, exp- like just Nigerians as a whole saying, yeah, this is a complete like mess up. Let's try to fix things. I remember when Easy said Nigerian artists are getting vibes from Ghanaian acts. Bruh. It was Bruh. it was a total mess. Like it r- almost derailed this whole career just from saying Nigerian artists yeah. are listening yeah. to Ghanaian artists and liking what they yeah. hear. Which is nothing wrong. So Nigeria, Nigerians feel like they have to lead in everything. And even when they're not leading, it becomes a, well, you're only leading because Ghana is smaller or this. But I mm-hmm. think those who have exposed themselves to both countries agree with what you're saying. You know, Bernard had a whole interview where he was bigging up Ghana yeah. and he said he enjoys staying in Ghana. You have, the reason why you have, toast, uh, you have uh, Mr. Easy. Ghana who obviously has had access to both countries and can say certain things and big up Ghana in its way and say how it influenced the sound. So I think our big issue, and it's clear, is just this competition we have with everybody. South Africa, Ghana, anything, you know, and if it's not Africa, then it becomes, even when Cardi says it looks like DR, people took beef, you know, they were offended by that. We, we, we don't want to be compared. Have, Nigerians have uh, very thin skin. And it's again. I think it's an environment issue. Like no, no, yeah. the environment makes them that way. But Everything they have to defend I, I, themselves. No, trust me. That, that guilty environment. Is we're all guilty of it. it. it, it we all do. We all we all possess it. Let's be honest. I always say that, like, when people say, like, because you know, in America, they're like, "Oh, Nigerians are too aggressive." I'm like, "Yo, you only see fifty percent of our aggression. <laughs> like, we're the ones who have, who have moved out of Nigeria. This is a state. You're in Lagos, and you meet." Yeah, yeah. I'm like, go meet the Nigerians in Lagos, and you know that we're the ones who are the nice ones. Thanks. Bro, like, Thanks. Because we're looking at them like they're crazy. Border. So if you think like, we're, we're aggressive. I, I mean, it, it, it's, it's so funny because it's like, you guys don't know how much we have to learn as Nigerians when we come out of Nigeria. Because sometimes you be like, yo, like, the way that people move in Lagos, you, you imbibe that, like, m- m- mentally so much that, like, you don't even know that you might low-key have some form of CTSD because when other African countries are like, yeah, you're being a little too aggressive. I'm like, aggressive? You call this aggressive? Like, bro, like, I, I'd be myself. I wouldn't even survive in Lagos. Me, I would be, I would be a mumu. I will be a mumu. I'll be yeah. looking at the ones in Lagos like that. It's crazy. And then you're saying that I'm the one who has an issue? That is wild to me, you know? But the thing is, also, I want, I want to big up Mr. Easy, too, though, like, this guy, right? Like, I remember, like, back then when he first, when he first, wanted to do his show in Lagos, right? I remember he didn't do that at Echo Hotel. 
he did it at Landmark, and he did it in such a way that was it was dope. It was one of my best concerts in Lagos. This is like back in 2015. But he also was able to realize that like you can't scale with Lagos no. during shows. You honestly cannot scale. It's he impossible created, he because, created Dirty December and moved that shit to Accra. Um, he created Dirty December and moved that shit to Accra because he was able to realize that this is how you're able to scale with this. And honestly, if he hadn't made that call, I don't even see Ghana being as popping as it is right now because the same year he said that T Rave was the same was the first year for Afrochella because I remember meeting um, some of the Afrochella guys back then. And then obviously over the last couple of years, you've seen how things have grown. So yeah. big up to him too because he, he's had a clear and consistent vision. That's, and I'm that's glad one that thing we could all agree on. His yeah, vision, definitely. his vision is Absolutely. like I said, like his ac- business acumen and his vision is like way past that because the man's been in game for like popping because obviously he's been doing music for a while, but yeah. been popping for maybe four, four or five years. Has it been longer? Yeah, it's back. Yeah, um, Mr. Easy. It's been four or five years, right? I think it's it's around that. Yeah, yeah. 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 And look how yeah. much he's done. Like he went on tour with a whole different genre of artist. Yeah. He's been out there. He's created um, power out here, launching careers and all that. So he's definitely one of those gems in our yeah. in our market. And obviously, yeah, he's learned not to speak too much against the grain yeah. because you saw what Ninja almost did to his yeah. career. So. Nigerians tried to cancel him for a long time, and I and I didn't understand the weird um the, that that whole dynamic, right? Until like o- 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 over the, over the last couple of years, I've come to understand it. Which is, yes, I'm Nigerian. You guys know I'm Nigerian. You guys are also Nigerian. But there's this whole thing when you go against the grain. Even Yemi Alade, I think, experienced a little bit of that. Well, Burner, like, yeah. Burner, like, right Burner. She's, I think she's he, still he, going through it. To be honest with you, uh, no, no, Yemi, Yemi's still okay. going through it. And I think what what you realize is, and I've also realized this in, in the space that I'm in because of the events and concerts that I do, is that you always want support from your home base. I'm sure, like most people are coming out from your home, you want support from your home base. But once you recognize that your home base will not be consistent and they won't do, you have to go out to the world. And when the world embraces you sometimes, that's when you can then come home. And then, like, you know how there's that whole saying about a prophet is never respected in his, like, homeland or something like that, right? And then you get that embrace, and then you're not able to come. It's al- it's almost like you need to expand your market, right? Because you're, you're trying to be anti-fragile. Like, if Nigeria doesn't fuck with me today, that doesn't mean my career should end. Think about how many Nigerian artists that we know who were popping at one time, right? All mm-hmm. in Nigeria. But they never expanded their markets, right? Nope. And now that they're not popping anymore, they can't do anything because it was only the Nigerian market they catered to. This is true. Right? So it's like you have to be able to expand your market and always trust in the people. When I when I always say that, I mean people globally, right? You see Mr. Easy, he's going to Latin America. That man can go to Asia, wherever he wants to go. He's like, I will place my faith and my product into as many ha- people's hands as possible so that if worse comes to worse, I'm not relying on just one market to pop up my career because you never know how these things go. You know, so, yeah. This is a fact. Nothing but facts, my guy. But, so, um, what can we look forward to this December from your brand? Man, bro, we, we went, <laughs> we're doing Ghana Heavy. Um, we're also going to be in Lagos. Uh, we're going to Lagos next week. You're going to do plug, Lagos? Plug all your events, bro. Plug yeah, all yeah. you going to do yeah, Lagos, yeah. bro? Why? Hey, man, listen. I got to see family, man. I got to see family. <laughs> if I'm I was in family. there, no Lagos. Okay. Bro, listen. Like, Lagos is not good for your health, bro. Like, I, mean, I, I, wish, I wish more people who were there understood what they have to unlearn. Because I'm like, this psyche... Like, it's absolutely, not good, bro. Absolutely. It's not, not, not good at that. all. Like, it's like, talk, you're talking about mental. Uh, you're talking mental. about mental. But I'm talking about even, yeah. like, even like environmental, bro. Like you're breathing yeah. in. Just when you land in Lagos, you're breathing in all this garbage. Like, yeah, nah, I'm, I, to be honest with you, my anxiety kicks in on the flight. Big time. Like I'm talking Big about time. you land and you're like, all right, how am I going to maneuver my way? Because yeah. the idea yeah. now is how much money can I leave here with? In every situation exactly. you're in, in Ninja, it's crazy. Exactly. I'm like that exactly. till I die, and I love my shit. Like till, like, bro, I'll talk shit with the best. But any situation you're in in Ninja, you enter airports. It's like, all right, this man about to ask. Now I got a ball game. Boom, 
You yep. want to buy something. Everything you is a negotiation, yeah. bro. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and I, I, if you didn't grow up in Nigeria, it's different too. Like people don't understand. Mm-hmm. Even when you visit family, you know what I mean? And you're yeah, from America. Yeah. There's also that conversation you have to have on, like, yo, uh, the struggle is real over there too. Like da 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 da. Yeah. You know what I mean? So uh, people ask me, why didn't you go to December this year? And I'm like, by the time I pay ticket, I can't come to Nigeria empty-handed. Yeah. I got it. Yep. There's yep. so many people you got to say. It's not just buying the ticket in place to stay. I have investment. cousins. I got a little nephew. You know what I mean? Nephews, nieces, yeah, all that man. stuff. So, and you know, Ninja, we don't. Our cousins are our siblings. Yep. So yeah, their wahala yeah. is your wahala. Yeah. Like it is what it is, and their kids are your nephews yeah. and your nieces. So it's crazy. And we're we're talking about family. We haven't talking about the abrupt stop by this police officer Bam. or this group. Or Bam. Such, Bam. This, such a, such a you know what I mean? Boys. You dress a little too nice. So it's 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 a lot of things. We and obviously some people don't realize if we don't call it out, nobody is. Oh mm-hmm. God, anything for the boys. Nah, but um, anything for so, the boys. <laughs> and nah, so no, I I. I I didn't go to I didn't go to Nigeria but from between <laughs> 2007 to 2013. I remember when I got back in 2013. Mm-hmm. You just start to like because you know more maybe self aware about the world, right? And you start to realize how like even your own family has changed. Like you, that that little cousin that you had mm-hmm. is now maybe like a teenage boy, but you can see the innocence is gone out of his eyes. Mm-hmm. Like Lagos has changed him, right? right? Right. So now you're like, oh my god, this nigga is like he's on predator level now. Like he's, he's like on a savage level now. And mm-hmm. that's how, that's the, that's it. Like we're getting prepared as a team to head to Lagos, right? And we're, we're all talking about getting mentally prepared to enter this jungle mindset because every single person who you see might be trying to take you for a lick, right? Yeah. Like it's literally what the situation is so that every time you have your guards, but I'm like, this is not vacation level shit, bro. You can't come here and relax. And that's what my problem is. It's like, the and to me, you 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 touched on this. Like the people there don't realize how much it's really fucked with their psyche nope. and how they approach the world. Because no. I'm like, bro, yes. if I, if every time there's no quality of life, because every single time you're fighting for life, you know what I mean? Like you're fighting to live, you're fighting to be respected, you're fighting for dignity. This is not how life is supposed to go. Like I I can't imagine spending the majority of your life in that legacy environment and you don't know how things are supposed to move and work in other places but i have faith and belief that this is going to change in our generation's time because there's no other thing that we can do except work on that you know but in terms of the events that we have going on in lagos this december we have um a beach party on monday december 23rd um we have afrochella in ghana on the 28th we have um uh our new year's east party on the 31st at the polo beach club but yeah, like we're we're trying to our whole thing is we wanna connect people to Africa through entertainment and tourism, right? And we can see it's a growing industry. Like I mean, all of us have been here and witnessed how we went from not being the cool African kids to now being some of the coolest kids on the block with yes. our music, with our entertainment, with our Nollywood, everything. So the way we dress, I personally the believe thing. that the whole thing and I personally believe that the same way you see the Jays and the Steve, Steve Style thing, you have all these people who who benefited from creating hip hop as an industry? That is where people like me, you, Bao, Jinde, all of us can help shape this industry. Absolutely, and and really, and that's why we also have to be truthful, right? Because uh, th- th- we can't ever sugarcoat it because yep. we can't sugarcoat because we have to hold each other accountable, and we, we're also responsible for the culture. Yeah, so if absolutely. we see something and we see people not doing things the right way. You have to call it out. Yeah, and, 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 you and have to address it. Should, because, uh, you mentioned it earlier. Is that our society we're good yeah. at? We're good at just like kind of going with the flow, and you know, we see the wrong thing, we kind of just like ignore it because yeah. we don't want to shake shit up. And that's why our society yeah. there is the way it is. It's no, like, yeah. Well, people, people are scared. People are scared. Yeah. To quote um H's favorite rapper. You remember when he did Death of Auto Tune? Like it was, exactly. it was like everything y'all doing. I think is corny. When he did Change Clothes, it was like I right, stop wearing. Yeah. So there yeah. has there has to be that dope group of people who are okay with you know speaking out. And when you speak out and people don't agree with you, it's not a bad thing. I think people have to be okay with the fact that people are going to be uncomfortable with you. Most of the people mm-hmm. that the people that are praised today, the fella that everybody loves, our parents didn't yeah. like him. Yeah, our parents, our parents, parents, yeah. like him our parents after, after hated went, him. After, after, after he dies, after he dies is when he becomes the black president. I was in Nigeria when fella yeah. died. Like we, everyone mourned him, but when he was popping, when he was playing music, smoking Igbo, telling people don't go to church or mosque. 
They didn't like that. But once he, once he, once that's over with, now it's like, okay, this man was right. So it is where it is. Burner Boy spoke out against a bunch of things, did things his way. All right, this man is not going nowhere. Drops two albums, Grammy, success and Grammy nominated, and yo, this man is this man is what Nigeria needs. So you know, it is what it is. I, I definitely want to big burner up as well, even though me and him and his team had very <laughs> business disagreements. Mm. But like, w- that's actually one of the biggest lessons I've learned this year is I know for a fact from even from insider stuff that burner did it his way, yeah, right? Like 100%. there's so many people who try to like manage this man, who try to tell this man what to do, how he's supposed to go, how he's supposed to package himself. But this, this man would always be like, nah, this is how I want this thing, this is how it's going to be. And the thing is like, you, you have to, you actually really have to know yourself to your core, right? Because obviously, yes, there are people who, gonna, who, who, who might even mean well for you, right? But it's not for you. So if, you, if you're not authentic to yourself and you don't really know what you're about, you, you might just see yourself going in any way the wind is pulling, right? And I, I'm very proud. That I saw Bernard perform over here in San Francisco. Like, bro, I, I had like white people in front of me, bro, singing this man's lyrics word for word, crying, bro, crying. And I was just like, this is what our music can do. And yeah. this is why people like us who are cultural curators need to be able to, um, what do you call? I'm not even saying we should even act as gatekeepers per se, but we need to act as people who hold our stuff to the highest standards, right? Because Absolutely. people think that things are in- inevitable, right? Uh, jazz used to be pop popping. Now it's not there. Mm-hmm. The blues used to be popping. Now it's not there. Hip hop has been here for the last maybe 20, 30 years strong. But it doesn't mean that it might be here for the next 30, 50, 100 years, right? So you you have to guard this genre because this genre is us, it's for us and by us. And it's something that I believe that it can be one of the sectors that helps bring our people out of poverty, man. So that's why I'm, I'm, a very, I'm very big on making sure that we do these things the right way and we at least hold ourselves up to certain standards, you know? So, Absolutely. Yeah, man. So bef- before we continue, let's take another quick break so we can get our sponsors yeah. out here. You know what I'm saying? I keep these lights sure. on, you know what I'm saying? So uh, yeah, yeah. we'll be back in seconds. <laughs> All right, we're back. You know what I'm saying? We have a special guest with us, Mr. H. 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 Crates. I don't actually know how to pronounce your, your Twitter name. It's, a, it's almost like it's a play on Socrates. I used to be a philosophy uh, buff back in the day. That's so amazing. when I created my first Twitter handle, it was um, H. Crates. But I actually came to them and find out, which was weird, that like Socrates' Sokrates, Sokrates' real name was actually H. Crates in my philosophy class was the end of his book which I found very weird because I did not even know that what, so, is, what was his yeah. real name it's a crates actually no way I That's swear crazy. like there's literal like at the end of like one of the Plato's books the main book literally it'll, it'll say it's a crates my friend and it was like wait what like I remember I used to keep a screenshot of that whole thing every time to show people like no seriously like I did not even know this but this is, this is really what it is it's right there in the book so yeah that is crazy. wild the more you know, <laughs> so, yeah. I'm a big philosophy buff too, so I I did not know that at all. That's dope. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. What did you What did you guys think about the Davido album? The fu- that's the I was literally just. I to um I actually account. liked it, and this is my thing. I think Davido went the Afrofusion route, mm. which um a lot of people are still warming up to because I remember when Burner dropped his album, everyone's like, oh, this is a bust. This is trash. Da, da, da. Nah. They, bro, who, who in your circle said Burner's album was a bust? Bro? I can't who, tell you. Like, I can't tell you. There's celebs, come on, there's celebs you like that didn't like the album. Come on, fam. No, but it's, nah, n- it on, was bro. a new sound. Outside of the singles, no, no. a lot of people didn't know how to take it because a lot you know, whenever an album comes so close to another album, they always compare it. Remember when um, Whiskey gave us sounds from the other side. Yeah, Everybody yeah, yeah. was offended by it because they wanted to, you know what I mean. And then he gave them vibes, and they were like, "What is yeah. what is this?" So Burner, I think at first everyone was shocked, but I really liked the David O album. Obviously, the thing with David O I, is he exposes himself to a lot of sounds. Like if you put every hit song David O has, like. They had varying sounds in it. You know, he when he's with this producer, it sounds different. When he's with that producer, it sounds different. So I think mm-hmm. you get that. And obviously, we've been waiting for a full project from David O for how many years now? Three. Yeah, so 
I think he did. Yeah, I, I like it. Good. I like it. I know a lot of people are like, it's a new sound for some people, but I really like it. The mm. song with Naira Mali and um, Zlatan, I think it's definitely a hit. Um, I'm not mm. sure what, you know, the label is going to push, but I'm just happy to hear new songs from David O. That's not Fallen If. Yeah. Because golly. <laughs> Bro. I'm tired. We, we, yo, yo, but you know something, though? No, I also, my only critique of the album was I just didn't understand how, you know, that period between 2017 and 2018 when this man was blazing hot, right? It yeah. felt like every song that was releasing was the top number one. I just, back then, I just, I didn't understand why he was just dropping so many songs back to back. Like, you can work a record, right? And I'm like, yeah. why do you think that you're going to have these hits in 2019? Like, this song, like that, that mm-hmm. like that song, mm-hmm. I still cannot believe that like that song was dropped on some like that is one of my favorite so that, that, that is a hit I think it probably, I, it, probably had, it, hit. it probably had something to do with the other people involved with the records you have to remember there's a lot of people involved with oh, oh really I didn't, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't even I said I, yeah, I didn't know that part the, the, the other song Why Baby I'm like why didn't these two songs make the album because there's some of those songs in the album that I didn't even rate but I'm like if you add those two songs this like history, because at the end of the day, I'm not even thinking about right now where we are, but I'm just like, how would history judge this album? I'm like, you add those two songs on top of the it other things you that you already had. And I, I feel like it changes everything because yeah. some of the other songs were just filler songs that I didn't understand what was going on there. But I'm like, you had all these hits yeah, I don't that you released that didn't really, you know what I mean? Like, I why like, didn't like that make the album? Why didn't Why Baby make the album? Yeah. These are good songs. No, I know? actually, I brought this up Great in conversation song. with somebody um, recently, and it's like, they should have... Because he's a label even, guy they, now, right? They should have even put, like, a deluxe version out where they had these records. These actual exactly. Records I, that made the most sense. And and like you said, I think back then, Mans didn't see himself slowing down at all. No. You know, and you're touring, you're doing these songs, and he was touring Africa more back then, right? Yeah. And the love you get bro, back home. Man, that man was everywhere, bro. Yeah, everywhere. no, no, that, that jet was being used. <laughs> they were moving. They were moving. But that's when he man. was banning people from Africa. This is true. You're not allowed to come here. <laughs> this man not allowed man was banning here. people from Bruh. Africa. No, so I think he was super hot back then. And like you said, I don't, you know, you don't see people. We never saw Afrofusion coming. Nope. When Whiskey was yeah. huge, it was just like, this is, uh, this is going to te- carry on. Technically, from, Afrofusion, uh, Lock My Jai was making Afrofusion. Though. No, like, but I'm talking Bruh. about when Whiskey was hot. Oh. Like, because I mean, Whiskey <laughs> grabbed everybody's attention. He grabbed artist. everybody's attention. He was like, whatever it is I'm making is going to be good forever, you yeah. know? And then yep. he slowed yep. down. Yeah, and then he slowed down and you get other people coming in and now we have all these sounds. So I think... They got to do maybe... And yeah, you have do maybe, and everyone's like, "This is the new Whiskey. It's over. It's over for Whiskey." So, and then Whiskey drops a project like he did you just hear, did. Did you hear the Sound Man project yet that he just dropped? Yeah, yeah I definitely heard it. I definitely heard what it. What are your thoughts? Definitely heard it. Uh, you know, my thing with Wiz, bro. Like me and Wiz are like the same age, right? <laughs> yeah. And Wiz has cost me so much money. FYI, like <laughs> we know, we like, know. I'm talking about when, when <laughs> I have stories oh, today. But like, Ula, but like, Ula, <laughs> but my my thing with Wiz is like I don't understand. Like, there's certain parts where I'm like, because so you see where Burner is right now, how Burner is working. Like the last two years, my man has been blazing. I think he might have another two years where he can maintain the same energy, right? But I just never felt that Wiz gave us that. You know what I mean? He never. I don't. I don't think he because I feel like he's naturally talented, right? Very much and there's so. a the time like you see Cristiano uh, was up, like comparing to soccer. Cristiano is talented, right? Yeah. But you can see that hard that hard work puts him like on a whole different galaxy, right? I, I just felt like it's I strategy, wanted man. To, it really comes uh, down to strategy. I wanted to. It's nothing different. Or three than... years of yeah of with giving us that same level because I believe that he can reach that. I still don't personally feel like Wiz has reached his proper potential. No, so I we, don't. But then, I don't think so. Because even with, even with Soundman, right, you know Wiz is disparate, bro. Like, you put, you put Wiz, Wiz, Wiz's music is like leftovers after Thanksgiving. You feel me? You put that shit in the fridge, you bring it out, you warm it up the next day, you know this shit going to hit. Facts. You know what I mean? Like, and, and it's like, but I'm like, bro, like, give me more, fam. Like, you I know, really, I think, really want more. I think Wiz's problem is Wiz's greatest gift and how easy it comes to him. 
Exactly. Like of all, exactly. of all the other artists, like I know, like things come easy to Burner because he's ultra talented. Because I've been, I've spoken yeah. to artists that have been in studio with Burner, and they're like, "Bro, mm. you drop a beat, this man could dead freestyle and just blow you out the water." Like, yo, I'm on a different level. Practices, right? And then with Wiz, this was I'm talking about EME days, right? Wiz, I'm mm. not gonna say all the artists that were EME, but you guys know. Like, all these people would hang with Wiz, like, party with him, turn up with him, do this with him, turn... Mm. And then, Wiz already has four songs. When did you record your four songs? Oh, I just did this, boom, boom. You know what I mean? So, Wiz, it comes so easy to him. I don't know when we're going to get that whole... Yo, this... I think that second album was when we got a full... Like, I think Wiz and Banky got to work together. Yeah, Ayo. Was where we Mm. got... Wiz and Banky together are... Oh, it's, it's like, a very it's like good Brad. duo. It's like Timbaland and Missy. It's like you just certain duo. Yeah, yeah certain Puff, duos, Diddy, like Jimmy all Jim that. And Terry Lewis and Janet. Yeah, like Wiz and Banky has to come back. It's just Banky yeah. has an ear that Wiz appreciates, and obviously Wiz has the talent to just make things happen. Don Jazz and the Banj. Yeah, it's just certain things that just go well, and I think Wiz by himself, you're gonna get the vibes, and you're gonna get a lot of happy to be there people in the room. Mm-hmm. That we're just gonna mm-hmm. get vibes, mm-hmm. so I'm not sure what what we're gonna get. But Wiz is so talented that he can just say "fuck it," you know. Let's it hope, does, it does come. Let's, easy. Hope, it come it, easy let's hope it all improves. Because I mean, that's been my biggest critique on on a bunch of acts. From but the now the there's world. competition, though. Yeah, I mean, there's competition, and, that, and that's good. I, I love yeah. that the competition is there because I'm hoping because you have to understand that, like right now, right? We have Wiz, we have Davido, we have Burner. Right. Mm-hmm. So first, it was Wiz. Wiz, Wiz was no. Obviously, there, there were people who came before him. But I mean, like for the last ten years, it was Wiz, Wiz and came Davido. like from Wiz, Davido. They were doing back and forth, right? And then as those two started to slow down, Burner has come and it's like, yo, we're gonna keep pushing. It. And to me, like, bro, like when you think about this from a business perspective and a market perspective, the more that they expand and expand the boundaries, the more you can sell more services, more African themed fashion, more African theme. Like, it's like, you know, these, these things open up doors for everyone, right? I remember when venues didn't know anything. I'm from the spot, nothing about Afrobeats. They're like, so you, you guys, you guys are black, but you're not black, <laughs> right? Like, I'm like, we're black, but we're African. We play Afrobeats. Like, what is that? Right. But now, you, I'm talking about like, you will be going to the top clubs in the West Coast and they're dropping Afrobeats like it's nothing. No, right, so, I, I definitely so we, remember. We're, we're playing. We're, we're play, Hello. In a role, and all of us oh. have played the role in expanding this. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, you good. Can, can you guys hear me? Yeah, no, no. All of us have played the role in expanding this. I just, I just wish that, like, every time Wiz drops a project, I'm like, yo, Wiz, man, like, take me back to that superstar feeling because our generation, or like, at least my age group, I know that we grew up with Wiz. I remember when Wiz came out. I remember where we were at. Wiz, Wiz allowed people like me be proud to go out to anywhere and promote. Right? It was like, yo, Wiz kid got us on the music side. We're going to get them on the promo side. Like, whatever what, whatever African shit is going on, we're here with it, right? But in the last couple of years, I haven't had that feeling come back. And don't get me wrong, I'm also here for an, a growth in the artist. I'm not one of those fans who's like, oh, I want the old J, not mm-hmm. the new J, or I want the old Kanye. You know? like, I'm like, no, I just want to see growth because we all grow. Right, that's one of the reasons why I don't even listen to the weekend. Not to go off point, but like, I'm like, bro, how can for the last ten years, bro? When I was a fuck boy, I was listening to the weekend. <laughs> you feel me? Like, how can for the last ten years you still making the same type of music? There's no growth. You didn't have a child. You did not do nothing else in life. Like, I don't get that. I, I don't. That's anyway. That's a, that's an tangent. That's an tangent. But what I wanted to see is this kid's growth, and I want to see him really hit the same heights, man. But. Yeah, nah. sound, sound man EP is, is dope. It's dope. It's just not. It's not something it's not where a, like. It's well yeah. again. He's gonna claim it's Star Boy, right? So mm-hmm. I think. Yeah. When we get a, I like I've liked every one of Whiskey's EP. Sounds from the other side included. Um, so yeah. we'll see, we'll see what comes up from what, it. What What's your What's your favorite record off the project, both of y'all? I, I like Cover Me by with DJ Tunes. Okay, that that's a strong. I also I also think Tunes brings out a good part of Wiz too, though. Low key, like I think he brings a fun like, part out of him. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think they they have a good partnership there. My favorite is the one with Chronics, the first one, Jam, 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 yeah. Jam was yeah. a beautiful yeah. way to start the project. 
Um, yeah, I liked blow, blow me too. I like Blow um, featuring Black Jersey just because he said separately. Yo, I, I, but I thought that that record was perfect for Duncan Mikey, though. I, I didn't want to say. I, fe- I still feel like he had something hey, to do with that man, project, man. but hey. Yeah. Hey. One young man. Nah, that was, that was, probably, that was a Duncan probably, Mighty song. Yeah. That was a Duncan. They probably ruined my nigga from that song, though, but it is what it is. <laughs> I, wonder, I wonder if the if the, the son the son of is it son of PH where does he where does he say he's from? Who? Is it, uh, Solo Port Harcourt. It, that what, that's what he calls himself, right? Like a mighty. Mm-hmm. Oh, Duncan. No. Yeah. Port Harcourt's true son. Oh gosh, there you go. You, he's starting to start a rumor. Don't no, no, no. That's what he calls himself. No, I feel like you. No, I'm talking about your man's talking about. You said he should have been on that track. Tunde's going to run with that idea, and we're going to have some. Man, that might have wrote no, the song. But, no, 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 but no, 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 no. I, I honestly believe when I listen to it, I'm like, it feels like a Duncan Mikey track. Joey, I can't. Joey, like I can't. We'll it's have one, it's one, it's one, it's one, it's, it's one of those things where, because you know, Wiz has been getting accused of doing dirt to some producers of late, right? So I'm like, I, I wouldn't put it past Wiz to be like, all right, Duncan, man. This, Thanks, this for out, Thanks for the vibes. Thanks for the vibes. <laughs> but we'll take it from here, man. TFTV. We'll take it from here, man. I, I got a guy that can say wine your mouth too. <laughs> 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 you know, I'm cool. dying to play one cool, time. Yeah. Right? Be it's cool. like black jersey. Cool, yeah, beautiful, <laughs> beautiful. <laughs> we'll use that. Whoa. So it's a reference track, uh, bro. Uh, nah, uh, again, Wiz. This is this is between a chair and Tune. This has nothing to do with me. I didn't say anything. I'm just saying what. I thought nah, <laughs> nah, nah, nah. The, the, the product the product was really good I'm just hype he, he shouted out my village when he shot Sapele I was village? hype Sapele Sapele's your village? yeah I'm a shaking wow, boy wow. bro hey, I, I, have, I have a house in Sapele that just finished that I finished building last month I thought that was Urubo side no Sapele is a shaking in Urubo and oh, Smalley Jaw. I didn't know that. I always thought Worry. Nice. No, nah, Worry is heavily Shakari, but there's um really? Pure, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, the all of Worry is a Shakari. See, see, you see, this thing was, we're going back to the original topic, right? The average Nigerian doesn't know shit about all the other tribes in Nigeria. Not a I think a lot. This is true. Not like, a damn they, thing. They, I think they say, I think they're like two hundred something ethnicities in the country. Bro, no, it's you more. can't. Per- pronounce my like 20 bro right? listen so it's like how is it possible for us to even talk about the, the showcasing our tourism and the values and the beauty of our country hey, just hey, the average hey, Nigerian, hey, Nigerian listen, that we trust know me it. i will never ever talk down on anybody not knowing africa because i know my nigerians don't know nigeria i will never Bruh. when people be like oh i'm going to africa and they're like oh what country or when they be like People don't, Africans don't know Africa. Like, how the hell am I supposed Bam. to get mad? I meet Africans every day and they tell me some shit about their country. I'm like, word. And mind you, I'm open minded and I study. So people <laughs> see me all the, the time. The fact that there's not, a, like, if somebody said, oh, hey, what museum in Lagos or what museum in Accra can I send? Should, you know, should I send? Visitors yeah, to, my friend. I can't think of fam. One place. Listen, there should the Lekki, be the Lekki Conservation Listen, Center. the Benin Kingdom could be a tourist attraction. Like, man, they could be going yeah. from Lagos to Benin and seeing the stat. Like, the Benin the actually kept it's not, their culture. It's fucking crazy. To it's me. insane. One of the richest um, part of Nigeria um, history is the Benin Kingdom. Yeah, people don't yeah. know nothing about it. They, they have all that. The mask is up in, in London uh, that people are paying for. London, yeah. Yeah. you get me? Yeah. So we have exam. we have ways to go. There's so much about our culture. That's people could go that's to the shit. town. I'm, I'm, I'm focused. I'm trying people to could go to the town where they shit. have all those twins and triplets in yeah, Yoruba land because they're eating all the yams. Yeah, that thing too. That's Nigerians have the biggest biggest chance, like the highest percentage of twins. Yeah, because of the, in the world, the yam tubers that could be used. Like like was, when H says it, I just laugh. I read the comments, I laugh, and I keep moving because personally, I tell everyone this: after getting paid for my opinions. I'm not spewing opinions for free. Like oh, for y'all sure. gotta, y'all gotta put this on. <laughs> I, I, no, I like that. No, it's it's real because now as, someone will not call me my father stupid because I said some yeah, shit for yeah. free. Don't become nah. Don't become sad for sounds. Nah, don't be, become sad for yeah, sounds. Yeah. No. no, if you're gonna call me stupid, let me at least go on with a check. I That's think. how I see it. I mean, yeah. If, do you want to be sad for sounds? Do you want to be Charlemagne? Shit, I'd rather be the bleached wow. one. Wow. Do you want to be talking the about bleach one? Are we talk about men's meats? Oh, wow. wow. Anyway, God, anyway, we have H on the line. Let's take what? advantage what? of that. What? 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 And um, oh no, no, it's hundred percent. That's one of the goals. One of the goals for me is to figure out how to uh, again work with like-minded people 
so that we can figure out how to get this tourism shit popping. That's why I'm like, shout out to Afro, no, but we, Afro we talk, Chella guys. We talk- we, we need to focus on building shit like museums. Most of these colonial countries, they bring in most of their GDP from tourism, from museums. Like, yeah, how, yeah, exactly. How, how many people fly into East New Africa York? been on that years before us. 100%. How yeah. many people fly into New York just to go see, uh, you know, the MoMA, all these, the Statue of Liberty. All, all these random, the Guggenheim, you know what I'm saying? D.C. has no, the National remember, Museum remember of the Smithsonian, this, this and the third. We talked about creating, even if it's a group chat to start off with, about like-minded people, right? Mm-hmm. Like, we need to actually start being more, and I think I even talked to Bawa about this, like, we need to start being more intentional about this, right? Mm-hmm. Because I honestly feel like that's also where hip-hop dropped the ball, right? Like, you had one or two, three people who maybe you were having these conversations with, with each other, but you went, you didn't have, like, a movement. Like, you just have to have cultural curators, bro, like, all of us, like when we do things, when we know people who are trying to do good things, how we can plug them in to these situations, and then you're intentional with the curation. All of us know what it feels like to go to an event. You're like, okay, this person cared about how they presented this, or the music. This person put a lot of thought into that. Mm-hmm. Those are the type of people we need to be encouraging to, like, you know, put out the best art, put out your best work, put out, and then obviously, even if they don't do too well, you're encouraging them to always challenge themselves, right? It can't be, like, Nigeria is so comfortable with, me, with mediocrity, it makes me sick, yep. right? Like, it's like, yo, like, why? You know, like, we need to be pushing for excellence because we have it. You know, like, yo, the, the funny thing is, it, it would, like, I know, like, I build them, obviously, we all know how, or some of us know how they said Afrochella, right? Yeah. I'm like, yo, they went back, but it would, it would, it could have been easy for them to not want to pursue that dream. Easy, mm-hmm. but like mm-hmm. you get support from from the government, you get support from local people on ground. Yo, you try to do the same thing in Lagos, fine, <laughs> bro. That's if it's the, not the only person if, I know in Lagos, the only people I know in Lagos that are doing similar, that are like even close to doing similar things, are the native guys, Shani and them. Yeah, and then uh, yeah. Chin with Giddy also Fest. Giddy, yeah, Giddy Fest with Chin, and yeah. me and, and that was why because me and Chin were going back and forth because me and Chin have had this conversation. I, I personally tell Chin that, like, I honestly feel like Lagos, we should, we should just accept that. We should take the L in Lagos, right? And accept it, right? Like, this is, you know, when you accept that this place is too contaminated, you mm-hmm. can't change it, you can't change the people, but what you can do is start over, right? There's a reason that man then went to Las Vegas, saw the desert, and were like, we're going to build here, right? Like, this, yeah. is, this is the mindset that we should have. And I feel like the other places in Nigeria that we should take advantage of and create an experience around those places, Calabar for one, right? There are other places that just have land because I'm like, yo, Lagos is too jaded. People yeah. are already too conditioned. Like they're not here for anything else. Fam. It's, it's, it's dog eat dog over there. Go create a different atmosphere and then be intentional in Calabar. And then you're able to then start from there and build a, a tourist attraction where people are flying in and going to Calabar to stay for a week or whatever, you know? So, let's, so, so, doesn't so, always so, have so that's what it. we should do. We should be working with the government that's, to figure out where we can, you know, pull plots and, of land and, and build states. our own future. Because nah, all that pollution in Lagos, bro, I'm not moving my family the fuck over there. That's not happening. But um, you can see, even somewhere like Eco Atlantic, like, they like that mm-hmm. one part, Banana Island, Eco Atlantic. They're not dealing with the same pollution that you're dealing with in in Ojuelegba and you know all these d- p- heavily densely populated places, bro. It's nuts. Yeah. It's nuts. So, Max. anyways, it's a great conversation. We'll definitely talk more about this offline when we're drafting out. You know, draft, drafting up. Uh, take you taking over the world, Kenny. Definitely, man. I'm just I'm just happy that Ghana. It's showing us what the template can be. Even though I know that there might be a couple of hiccups this December, I'm not saying that it's going to be perfect like we just saw this past, <laughs> we just saw yesterday. Mm. <laughs> it's not going to always be perfect. Oh, for sure. But I mean, at the same look, time, this, it's like they're trying. You know? This conversation is just... It's just a tip of the eye Tip of the eye bag. It's just a tip of the eye bag. Think of the eye bag. Oh, but like, um, like we were saying earlier, we feel like the country is ready and the people just have to catch up to what Ghana as a country has done. And in Nigeria, we feel like the people, you know, can, all, the people are ready and our government isn't. So I think that's where the struggle is. Having the mindset and also having a, a government that's back in the mindset is where, you know, Ninja, Ninja, because we have thinkers, we have people who want to get certain things done. But we do appreciate you coming on. 
Uh, thank you. Anytime, man. Absolutely, family. Is there a website Anytime, that everyone yeah, can watch? Afropol- yeah, Afropolitan Group. Afropolitan Group dot com. Uh, you can follow us on Instagram at, at, at Afropolitan Group. Twitter at Afropolitan GP. Like, Afro- just type Afropolitan Group on the internet. You will definitely learn more about us and what we're about. So, definitely. Yeah. We're, de- we're gonna put uh, all that info at the, you know, in, this in the episode, bio, so people will be able to find it. Mm-hmm. Definitely, right. you guys. You guys, thank you so much for having me on, man. Thank you for being I on. I appreciate brother. it. See you. See you soon. For sure. Later. For sure. For sure. Peace. All right, guys. Have a good one. You too, Bye. brother. Good night. Uh, yeah, it's a good homie Eche, man. Big ups to Afropolitan. He brought up a lot of a lot of really good points. Yeah, yeah. These are things we. I mean, you and I talk about these sh- this shit all the time. No, no. This is well. It's good to have someone else say it, you know, so it's not just the same voice saying the same thing all over again. Mm-hmm. Um, we're not going to harp on it too much, so it's not like we're coming for Ninja. True. Um, so let's see. Um, we wanted, I know we wanted to touch on the subject of... Very sensitive. Yes. Oh, uh, well, first, Brother Nature. Uh, Brother Nature instantly. Brother Nature got beat up in Florida. Man, and I felt so bad initially because I'm like, damn, who the f- who looks at Brother Nature and goes, you know what? You know I'm gonna kick. Beat up? I'm gonna kick his behind. This is who I'm gonna beat up. I'm gonna beat up Brother Nature. And then you found out that he basically got smacked in front of his girl mm. and instigated a fight. You hate to and see the it. The whole video was caught by the restaurant or wherever he was. They they let that clip go early. But I mean, because, I mean, of course. I no, mean, no, they were like, "Yeah, that, the, I'm sorry." Was, so basically, Brother Nature um, footage hit the net and basically showed Brother Nature getting jumped, beat up, whatever, by these two dudes. These two dudes were later found to be in the club with Brother Nature the night before. So people on the timeline were saying, "Oh, they set him up. Like mm-hmm. they were hanging out with him in the club the night before. The next day, they jumped and beat him up, tried to rob him, whatever, the, whatever the case is." The dudes that were on camera beating him up on the time. They're like, no, you don't understand. You know, it, he he said he instigated da, 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 but there was no video footage to back that up. Brother Nature takes advantage of the fact that there's no video to back up the dudes that beat him up on camera and he goes, I got jumped, blah, blah, blah. So I guess the feds got involved. Sean King, you know, Marshmallow Savior uh, came out and basically was trying to rally the we'll social take justice. Care of you. You know, the social justice warriors that, you know, never really have any of their facts before they start to champion and campaign for social justice. Anything. He took Anything. advantage of, you know, the woke Twitter. And uh the next literally twenty four hours later, the restaurant basically put out the full footage of Brother Nature not only starting the altercation between these guys at the restaurant but repeatedly and repeatedly and yeah. the guys so it made me feel a few things whoa whoa pause what this is the reason why when i see things hit the timeline that i don't understand i keep my mouth shut one mm-hmm. even when i do understand it sometimes i will still keep my mouth shut because you never really believe half of what you see yeah you know and brother nature's i mean i've worked with 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 Kyle, you know what I'm saying? Like I've, I've, I've he's someone that he's a nice guy in person. Mm-hmm. Um, but everybody has that moment of weakness, man. He was really, really smacked and got caught slipping. That's really all it is. He he has to just take that L and move on, man. But to make it seem like yeah, he can be like, yo, don't worry about it, guys. I was bugging. He but, took advantage of the fact that his fans didn't know what was going on. Yeah, I don't like but, that. So, brother nature, you're kind of you're in a weird place with me right now, bro. Canelo, you and Canelo are gonna have to figure it out. Yeah, he's not allowed to get next to Canelo. Canelo's hard as superior. Nah, Canelo got a restraining order. Oh, <laughs> right. That boy was wilding. Nah, it's, <laughs> it is what it is. I feel like, you know, we fall in love with a lot of, you know, people off social Whoa. media. Whoa. Yeah, like he's a nice kid helping animals out. Really? You didn't up, fall in love with the character, up, brother up, nature? Up, up, like you saw it and you were like, damn, this is a good kid. I've worked you know? with him. He's a nice kid. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, again, he got, got caught slipping. We don't know exactly. He didn't get, I don't think he got caught slipping. I think he went looking for trouble. Okay. Getting caught slipping is like, yo, you didn't have your guard up. Like, he but did, you, he didn't though. He went there looking for Wahala, and he got the Wahala he was looking for. Yeah, and we don't have sympathy because on this show it's no Wahala. So you brought the, you invited the Wahala to your side. And he got some. So I think I, you know, I'm not, I'm not shocked. Like when I saw the video, I was like, 
Why? When I saw the video, why is he so mad at Brother Nitro? I just and then because he would beat him up and walk off like it wasn't on some. Mm -hmm. It happened inside. It happened outside. Yeah, like that just seems like some some something somebody's trying to prove a point. And obviously, he had pictures of lean and drugs, so everyone was like, "Alright, this guy's bugging." That shit was crazy. Once um, I saw the lean, I was like, "Nah, bro." But then your boy, brother Nature, was outside with no shoes on. He beat him up, took his shoes off. I wanna, I wanna know who the girl, the girl he was with. I wanna know like how. That's not. That's not doing sin. That's not. Well, there's enough cameras now. That's the one thing. As she. Can't bow anymore. You, you cannot bow any Ashiris it's in this, in this 2019. Oh, it's impossible. Can't. Ashiri cannot be bowed. Ashiris cannot ever be covered. Mm -hmm. It's impossible can't in 2019. So there's um there's a saying that goes Ashiri bow, which means your secrets will be kept. Yes. Right. So we're just trying to say you can't keep any secrets anymore. Secrets. There's a camera and every any and Ashiri too. <sighs> secrets have been uncovered. Sure. They have been opened. Hmm. Hope on impossible yeah, to hide them. More power to him, I guess. You know, I know his brand is going to take a hit. Um, and then the, I guess we'll wrap it up with this news. Um, a young entertainer passed a couple of days ago. Was that two days ago? Yeah, it was two days. Uh, rest in peace to Juice World. Yeah, man. Um, I think it's they announced the cause of that yesterday. Yeah, I don't. I don't want to go too deep into it, but basically, yeah. So, um, condolences to uh, to to Juice World, the uh, team, the family. Prayers up to everybody. Fan and, base. Um, prayers up to you know G and Baby and Raj and everybody on on you know connected to to him on the the label side, the the publishing side, the, the management side, everybody. Like it it was super shocking because my little brother listens listens to his music. Gotcha. And he was one of the few artists from that generation that, you know, yes, he's rapping about all these things that I can't relate to. But a lot of these young kids that are dealing with depression and anxiety and thoughts like really dark thoughts that. and stuff, they really connect to, to, to his music. So I was aware of him because of, um, especially because of Lucid Dreams. I remember when that gotcha. whole thing happened where he sampled uh, um, Sting? Sting, and Sting was basically joking like, "Oh, he's going to help my grandkids get through college." Like that's how I became acquainted with his music. But I mean, super young kid, he just turned twenty one this December, man. It's absolutely sad because I know they quoted his lyric where he was talking about not making it past twenty one. <laughs> Manifesting. Yeah, it's, it's gotta it's, be careful with your tongue, man. It's. Yeah, sad. It's, it's sad to see it it's just i don't know it's just a sad thing to talk about um like i said just respect and love to everyone going through mourning loss you know whatever it is that that whole process um because obviously he touched a good amount of people with his music so it's I, as somebody older than the age of 21 you know it's always sad to hear somebody pass at that age you know it's just so weird because you're still getting a grasp and a grip of how things truly are in this world. So it's unfortunate to see, to just see a young person pass. So, yeah. yeah I think we'll end the podcast with Lucid Drums, right? Uh, well. How do you feel about that? Uh, or do you have any other artists? We should definitely do Song of the Week. Got you. For sure. Um, definitely. Even though Sting is still making the bread off Lucid Drums. 100%. That's sad. Hundred percent. And even now with his passing his his Yeah, yeah, yeah. The streaming numbers are yeah. really insane. Oh he just cleared so many billions of streams. No, I'm sure he's gonna do it from mm -hmm. when it's the numbers dropped this week. So sad. He's so young, man. It's sad. It's sad to even talk about. Um all right. I don't wanna get sad, so let's uh go let's just move past it to the song of the week. Gotcha. What's your song of the week? Um, I was gonna say Lucid Dreams at first, but I, I mean, think I'll do, do a Lucid Nah, but then Sting getting the money. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, even though he did the album with Shaggy, but still. Okay. Sorry. Um, let's do. Um, I'll do a song man song. Okay. Pick pick with pick it. Pick uh, with uh, I pick with. <laughs> Not sarcasm. Pick with. Mm, no, no, no. When you think about being sarcastic, pick wits. Uh, my people, my people, if you want to hear the, if, about the newest instant um, drink you can buy in Lagos, it's called pick wits. Pick wits. It's a very, very sweet, delicious something. And listen, when you are drinking pick wits, 
and you get a good feeling. That's just the tip Whoa. of the iceberg. The tip of the iceberg. The iceberg. For the tip of the iceberg. You know, you go to Silver Bear and you want to go out to Silver Force. <laughs> it's just the tip of the iceberg. If you want the tip of the iceberg. Whoa. Drink Pickwit. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho. <laughs> I what am going to play song number two. It's called Blow. Whoa, featuring what? Black Jersey. What? 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 Black Jersey. What's the name of the song again? It's called Blow. You are a dirty, dirty. A blow. Blow is like drugs, right? Oh, wow. Okay, if you are from you are the 70s or the 80s, you are doing blow. I want more far. Well done. Wow. Well inside done. Life, inside life. Inside life. Who to the inside life? Inside life. Okay. Just blow your kidney pass. Shout out to Team Starboy. Starboy. Featuring Whiskey. Yaga. Featuring Black Jersey. Blow. Okay, that was Blow by Starboy. 
Starboy did so. Nah, um, that, yeah, was, that was that was blow by Starboy. <laughs> you said blow like a cop just now. I think you're about to arrest someone for having fun. Uh, we just caught a bunch of blow uh, <laughs> in the back the back of this guy's trunk. Pause. Uh, breaker, breaker, breaker. <laughs> uh, we got a ten eighty four. We got ten eighty four. Ch- right, so, uh, chocolate gentleman It may not be a citizen Chocolate gentleman Of this country You like compliments him tra- don't you? Tra- you know Traffic My bio is gonna, is my bio is gonna say They call me too And calls me chocolate Wow that's crazy That's exactly that's, what you that's just also, said That's also very strange but, That um, you would call me chocolate But hey here guess, we are Guess the nationality Of the cop By what I say So we uh, caught a uh, I, I see an overweight No 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 Mustached I'm gonna say I'm gonna say a few words Oh we're going through I can No uh, we had a uh, young black gentleman uh, trafficking into the wrong lane. Uh, okay, juiced up Caucasian man. Trafficate, trafficate. Oh wow, wow! One of your uncles then. <laughs> <laughs> Did I jank up? We are the, we're the, we're the, I mean, I didn't even know tra- trafficate was a real word. We've trafficate. All right, so we're gonna play a completely unrelated song to <laughs> "Blow" by Wizkid and Black Jersey. Um, huh. One of my personal favorite, one of my personal favorite uh, songs. Um, is, it, is it on the streaming platforms? Ah, uh, yeah, I found it. Um, found it. Found it. Found uh, it. Did you know um, Wheel of Fortune is changing host? Uh, it's no longer Homeboy. homeboy. It's not Homegirl. Yeah, we don't even know who they are. Vanna, is Vanna White? Vanna White. See, that's how you know you have a brand. That's how you I know. Come, I'm not thinking about you for years. And and like Vanna White. Because you're a cop. Whoa. You said blow. First of all, aggressively. You, you picked the song. You said blow aggressively. Right, well, we're going to play a completely unrelated song, uh, which also happens to be from Starboy, called Fake Love, featuring Duncan Mighty. Here we go. Hey, vibes. Vibes. Is this shabalistical? Shabalistic. Hey! This 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 vibe will Shout blow. Shout out to Killer Tunes, man. This vibe will blow your mind. I wanna be like this. Uh-huh. Deep love can be like this. Okay. I wanna do like this. This is a jam. Deep love can be like this. I do you who? Hey. We are more. Kind of vibes. I do you who? Hey. I do you who? We are more. Too much take it home, love. Take it home. We are more. Only fake me when you are hey, when you what? When I need them when I need it. Only what? Only fake me when you have the figures are beige. When I need them when I need it. Hey, why you there? Shall you go there? I'm not in order. Shall you go there? I'm not in order. Shall you go there for me if I don't fail? Hey, I don't know. Okay. So if you love me. Me, I beg, make a no. Say, so make it show me plenty love, make a no. Okay, so we're gonna pause that part. See? Because I like this song a lot, but you ever notice in the club when they play that record, they skip like that last bar of that verse? Really? So, I don't go clubbing. Okay, so basically, let me go back. I'll be to, home on my Bible. Uh, hold on. They skip they skip that bar. So they go, oh, yeah, well, make it now. They skip whatever the next oh, thing is. Oh, plenty of love. And they just go right into the only fakers. Yeah, I noticed that. Yeah. I don't bring clubs, that's right. Only fakers be loving okay. when you have. We're such music mm-hmm. nerds. When you ready, them to mama, when you ready. When you ready, you. Only fakers be loving when you have. It's a fact. When you ready, them to mama, when you ready. So this is only funny. This is why the music, Ali. Hundred yeah, yeah. percent. This is funny. Is this Queen and Slim music? Oh, no. Don't be disrespectful. Oh, wow. You know they played for Latin there, B. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ghana that was dope. Yeah. They played for all the Ghana editions. Mm. You know the people that go to Ghana to get to become Queen mothers. Why, After getting initiated by Black Americans. You think they go there and become queens after spending a slim time in Ghana? Of course, they Queen and Slim. Queen. Yes, that was a good one. Well thank done. you, thank you. I'm here all week. Well done. Well done. Anyway, carry on with the vibes, please. Hey. Oh, 
a doll. He's huh. Ghanaian. Sexy lady. Only, only, in this, only in the song. Yeah, it's a true story. Shout out to So And the other two beasts. The other B. The other B. <laughs> From Spintex onward. Wow. Damn, I remember how much I hated that verse. Okay. <laughs> we went through that verse, we right? Did. Oh, <laughs> we have kisses morning, for breakfast. When yawning. In the night, when it's bright. <laughs> In the morning, when you're young, I can't wait to see the and you're growling, and the balling, and the hauling, eating kebab, and the and the garden egg. <laughs> oh, oh, no, no, no. Hey. I wanna be. It's a vibe. This love I can, I can, like I this is just the tip of the iceberg. The tip of the iceberg. You know, this song will work when you get there. You know, come when you on. put on the radio, this song works. Come on. Works very well. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. We are more. Too much love. We are more. Abdul's going to fight us when he hears this. Nah, you. I want, you I want no parts of nobody. None of this. I'm blaming all this on Musa, by the way. I hope you know. Oh, yeah. Musa, Musa, I went through the list. Shabalistic Shout out to Shabalistic But yeah though, That's our song of the week It's obviously an old song And you wow, probably you just, heard you it just before it, You just mashed them together Into one song Interesting You probably heard it before <laughs> But um, yeah So that's why we chopped up over it Shout out to the Big up Boy to camp. Star Boys Big up to Pot Harcourt's finest Pot Harcourt's true song Shh, Facts Big up to Black Jersey And big up to my town Sapele you're from a different town every time we talk about your towns, bro. We're gonna have to. I'm telling you, between citizen you, of the land, between bruv. you and your twin, bruv. citizen of the land. So when I was when I was shouting, Glo- when I was shouting global citizen before you are you are shouting, you are yawning. They haven't given me passports. Any when you're yawning in the morning, the morning we're done. Anywho. My right. people, be safe. <laughs> we were going to go through rules of Dirty December, but... Nah, we can say that to the next episode. We'll save it for the next. That's Big up yourself. Great, that's actually a great way for us to really prepare people and for And we want to apologize because we had a whole different topic set, but then Cardi B... <laughs> Cardi, Cardi B, B just derailed us. Cardi B went to December you know, and she just vanished, went to she just December vanished. in Africa and she just did her thing. She vanished the topics. Fam, and then Queen and Salim stressed us the hell out. I mean, we didn't know what was going on. Facts. Anyway, big ups everybody. <laughs> so far this December, basically that's the energy. <laughs> Absolutely. And the theaters for Queen and Slim like, what's the meaning of all this? Yeah, people were just like. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know. You don't know why it's going on. Peace, my people. Right, we'll y'all. see you on next episode. Follow us on at the whole No Wahala. I don't even know how to speak. English no Wahala right Pod no Wahala on pod. all. <laughs> Social media platforms. Also, to those of you that have been tagging Bawa and I on our your end of the year posts, like what you're listening to on the podcast. Bless apps, up. The Bless rap campaigns, up. Apple Music, sure. all that stuff. I don't want to say names because I don't know if people want to have their name said, but um, y'all rock, y'all are dope. Um, I try to share as much as I can. Um, please, 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 thank you continue supporting we appreciate y'all 2020 we i hate to be those people like yo but we've been working and you'll see things coming as we go very soon forward all over the place all over the world also if you see us around with some merch, feel free to ask us for it because we'll be sh- we'll be giving away some some merch very soon yes hats before we start selling them so uh, if hats, you see us in the streets um, and you see hats sweatshirts, shirts, sweatshirts you know, sweatpants, all that stuff. The same Kente, Cardi B, well, we yeah. have it. It says no on we, the back. We may end up bringing some Noah Hala jerseys to, you know, to the motherland this December because, you know, it's always hot there. Well, Tunde's going to be there. Allegedly. And I'll be in um, Cameroon. My babe doesn't know I'm going there yet. Oh, you have a babe. Uh, cool. Allegedly. What's Please. her name? Thanks, everybody, for joining. Peace. Uh, <laughs> <laughs>